Hello. Uh, today uh, we will see the chapter 10, the bond price and yield. So this chapter is the, the first chapter of the security analysis. So we will see three different types of security. The first one is bonds, the second one is equity, and third one is derivatives. So, I mean, uh, we can actually divide uh, this class, like the 438, into two parts, big part. The first part is portfolio theory, uh, which is from chapter 5 to 8 that we covered. And then the security analysis is from chapter 10 to 17. And we will see each security and the features of security and the valuation of security. So the first one we want to see is the bonds and bonds price and yield is chapter 10. So what is the bond? A bond is a debt security. Debt security means you borrow money and you issue the bond and bondholder receive um, the lend money actually to a company. So bond is a contract of the long-term debt. Long-term debt. And the, if you buy bond, it means you, borrow, you lend money to the company and company will pay you certain uh, promised cash flow to you until the much bond maturity. So, so each bond has the par value. The, the, this is also called the face value. And this is the payment to bondholder and maturity of the bond. So if the bond is five years, uh, bond, then after five years, you're going to receive the par value or face value. In the United States, corporate bond face value is always $1,000. So sometimes you don't see this face value in the cash and then you just assume that it's 1000 The third feature is, uh, is the coupon rate. Uh, the the periodic, uh, periodic uh, payments to the whole bondholder is called a coupon. So it's like interest payments. So each, usually every six year, they pay coupon. So it's the same annual coupon payment. Coupon rate is easily calculated. It's basically annual coupon divided by the par value thousand dollars. This is annual coupon means if coupon is semi-annually paid then you have to double it. Okay. That's the coupon rate. Sometimes the bond does not pay any coupon and this is called a zero coupon bond. So it pays no coupons but it sells at deep discount which means there is a price difference. You will pay lower price than the par value and you're going to receive par value and maturity so that you can realize your gain on bond investment. And if the bond does not pay any coupon, this bond is called a zero coupon bonds. We usually call these zeros. Zeros. Okay. So this is typical price and yield code of the United States Treasury bond. Treasury bond is the United States government issue bond, federal government issue bonds. The highlighted issue in this figure matures 2023 August, right? The first column is the coupon rates. Coupon rate is 6.25% and par value is $1,000. So if you hold this bond, then you're going to receive 6.25% of $1,000 as an annual coupon. So $62.50 annually per year. If it is semi-annually paid, then it's going to be $31.25. Usually, U.S. Treasury bond pays semi-annual coupon. So each coupon will be 62.50 divided by two, which is $31.25. That's the six month coupon. For US Treasury bond, the coupon paid is February and August. So every six months. Okay. 
Uh, there's two prices here, bid and ask price. Bond market is the dealer's market, which means the dealer purchased the bond from the issuer and the sell the bond to the investor. So the price that dealer pays to the issuer is called a bid price. And the, the price that dealer sell to the investor called ask price. And there's a spread. There's a difference is that's the dealer's compensation. So bid price here is 132.9453% of the par value, which means that the price will be $1,320. Nine cents and nine nine dollars and forty five cents. Ask price is the price that investor pay one hundred thirty two point nine nine two two percent of the par value, which is higher than ask price, because that way dealer can make money. And the price will be one thousand three hundred twenty nine cent nine dollars and ninety two cents. The next column, CAG is the changes. So it's basically the change of the price. And then finally, ask yield, why yield is yield. So ask yield means it's yield, bonds yield to maturity based on the ask price, based on the ask price. For investor, ask price matter, right? Because for investor, you pay ask price, not bid price. So the yield here should be ask yield. The yield maturity is often interpreted as a measure of the average rate of return to the investor who purchased the bond for the ask price and hold it until its maturity date. That's why we call it yield to maturity. So this is yield return if you hold this bond until the maturity date, this is usually called YTM. And this will be the discount rate when we evaluate the bonds. So we will actually use this YTM a lot, very often this chapter, in this chapter. Now, if you, this bond, if you buy bonds like the just the on maturity, I mean, on coupon date, that's easy. You don't have to worry about valuate or interest and things. But it's possible that you buy bonds between the coupon date. So suppose this is the last coupon date, this is the next coupon date, okay? This is six months, right? So this is six months later. Suppose you hold this bond two months and then four months left to the next coupon date. See what happened. So it means that the coupon you're gonna receive here is basically just go to the new the coupon, who's gonna receive coupon? Coupon is paid to new owner, right? So basically buyer will receive this full coupon. Even though this buyer just hold this bond for four months and first two months the old owner, which is who is seller, actually hold the coupon. So it's not fair. This coupon should be divided by this into two. Based on the, the, the number of days they hold, each party hold. So for this case, say if the coupon is say $90, if, then you have two months, so seller holds, this bond for two months, buyer, new buyer bond hold for four months. So one third of coupon should go to seller, two thirds of the coupon should go to buyer, right? So $30 coupon should go to seller and $60 coupon should go to buyer. The thing is the buyer will receive $90 eventually. So when you, 
when buyer buy bond, what happened is buyer pay the thirty dollars upfront to the sellers as accrued interest. Accrued interest. So accrued interest can be calculated by, so if the coupon is semi-annual coupon, then annual coupon payment divided by two is the, the coupon payments. And they since last coupon payments, which is here. So this, this case two months, and they separate in coupon payments, which is the, the, this, the six months. So if this is 90, it means that two months divided by six months times 90, which is $30, should be accrued into rest. I mean, to simplify this problem, I'm used just a month basis, monthly basis, but actually you have to use the daily basis. So example here is suppose that the coupon rate is 8%, the semi-annual coupon payment is 40%, right? Because 30 days has passed since the last coupon payment and 182 days is the number of uh, days separating like the coupon payments. So the crude interest will be $40, which is the amount of coupon times, 30 day number of day passed and the 182 days, which is the, the number of days separating each coupon, the coupon payment. $6.59 is the accrued interest. So real price of the bond will be, if the price of the quoted price is 990, which is based on the price as of the last coupon payment actually, then your price should be 990 plus the accrued interest $6.59. So 996 $6.59 will be invoice price. invoice price. Got it? This is a, a listing of the corporate bonds. So bond listing in the, this table includes the coupon, maturity, price, and yield to maturity each of the each bond. The rating column, uh, I think the, that's the fourth column, not fifth column actually, is the estimation on bond safety based on their the analysis. We'll see bond rating later on a little more detail. Moody's Standard and Poor's, S&P, and Fitch are the, the credit rate agencies uh, in, the, in the world. Bond with A ratings are safer than the B rating. As a general rule, safer bond with higher rating promise lower yield to maturity because they don't pay high yield. Now let's look at the more about the corporate bond. So uh, in co corporate bond, many co bond uh, has the features called the core provision. So core provision means the issuer, the company can exercise this option, call option, which is the option right to sell, which means that the issuer can buy back this bond, buy back this bond, after a certain period usually, because they usually have the exercise uh, restriction period and uh, at a certain price, which is called the call price. Call price usually higher than the, the par value. So if the call price is 110 and uh, they, can, they can exercise call option after three years, it means that after three years, the bond can be called, which means issuer can buy back the bond at three, I mean, uh, the, after three years later at, and they pay 110% of the par value. It's a call price is 110. The callable bond is very common, very common because the call, uh, this, this actually um, lower the risk, interest rate risk for, to the issuer. Issuer, if the issuer think that, so suppose the interest rate lowered so that they can refinance this bond, is a cheaper rate that they want to buy back and refinance it. 
to do so they need to pay uh, the call price if not then they have to hold the bond until the maturity date which the actually uh, uh, make the bond expose uh, the, the high interest rate risk it means the call provision is actually the right for the issuer the company so for investor side they actually sell the call provisions uh, by increasing the yield increasing the yield this bond is called a callable bond and the the callable bond is very common in the united states most corporate bond is callable the second one is the convertible bond. Now, convertible bond gives the bondholders an option. Again, this, this option is held by the bondholder now to exchange each bond for a specific number of shares of common stock of the firm. The conversion ratio gives the number of shares for which each bond may be exchanged. So there's an example here. Suppose a convertible bond is issued at par of $1,000 and then convertible into 40 shares of the firm stocks. The current stock price is $20 per share. So the option to convert is not profitable now, right? If the stock price later rise to $30, which now means that the, the bond can be converted like each I mean, each bond may be converted profitability into the 1,200 worth of stocks, basically, right? The market conversion value is the, is the current value of the shares for which the bond may be exchanged. At the $20 stock price, for example, the bond conversion value is 800. The conversion premium is access of the bond price over the conversion value. If the bond were selling currently for $950, its premium would be $150, which means that, so you can always convert the bond if you have premium, right? So convertible bond holders benefit from the price appreciation of the company stocks. Not surprisingly, the benefits come at a price, convertible bond offer lower coupon rate, obviously, and their stated promise yield, the yield maturity will be lower too, actually, than non-convertible bond, which means the investor pay the price of this option. So who hold the option? The investor hold, so you have to pay. At the same time, the actual return of the convertible bond may exceed the, the stated yield yield to maturity because the option you have option to convert so if the you convert this bond to stock and you are profitable then you may have higher yield than the state yield originally stated yield to maturity okay the putable bond is the bond that has the put option now Again, the callable bond gives the issuer the options to extend or retire the bond at the call date. But put option gives option to the bond holders. If the bond's coupon rate exceeds the current market yields, for example, the bond holder will choose to extend the bond life, right? If the bond coupon rate is too low, it will be optimal not to extend that bond holder just to exercise this option. And you can, you can also you can reinvest this, this proceeds at current rate. So putable bond gives the option to sell the bond to the investor. It's not very common, but it's possible. And instead, investors should, should pay higher uh, the price by lowering the yield. So getting lower, getting yield, lower yield. Floating rate bond is the bond that whose coupon rate changes varies by the, uh, over the period. Usually, um, this bond is less risky than the fixed rate bonds. And possibly, um, sometimes it tied with interest rate, sometimes it tied with inflation rate, depending on the bond features. We'll see some of them later on, actually. Now, what is a preferred stock? Now, preferred stock is not bonds. It's actually stock. 
but the cash flow is very looks bonds actually because the, the preferred stock pays the fixed amount dividends so it's all it's usually characterized as a fixed income security Usually bond is fixed income because you receive fixed income and preferred stock is also fixed income. So um, you, it commonly pays a fixed dividend. Sometimes uh, floating rate preferred stock become more popular, usually linked with the inflation rate. Dividends are not tax deductible since this is dividend, not interest. But the corporation that purchase other corporations preferred stock are taxed only about 40% of the dividends. So 70% of the dividends are ta tax deductible because they, they uh, because uh, the IRS avoid to uh, tax twice. It's, it has double taxation issue. Uh, based in the issuer, there's other domestic issuer, usually the state local government, we call the municipal securities, municipal bond. So in many cases we call it munis. The other three, like Federal Home Loan Bank Board, Farm Credit Agency, JNMF, NMF, Redman, are the, the federal government agencies that uh, guarantee the pay, uh, payment of these bonds. Usually they issue the mortgage-related bonds, mortgage-related bonds. Now there's also international bonds. First of all, foreign bonds, are issued by borrower from a country other than the one in which the bond is sold. So for example, if a German company sells a dollar denominated bond in the United States, this is foreign bond. Japanese company sell dollar denominated bond in the United States, that's foreign bond. These funds are usually given the very famous names based on the countries in which they are market. For example, foreign bonds sold in the United States is called Yankee bond. So Yankee bond is foreign bond in the United States. Okay. Like other bonds sold in the United States, they are registered with the SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. Yen denominated bond in sold in Japan. So foreign bond in Japan called the samurai bonds. Pound denominated foreign bonds. So foreign bond in the United Kingdom is called a bulldog bonds. Okay, so that's the foreign bonds. Now there, there is another type of the international bond usually called a euro bonds. Euro bond is not European bond, first of all. Euro bonds are denominated one, one currency, usually the issuer side. So US company is dollar, but sold in other countries. So for example, there's called Euro dollar. It's dollar denominated bond sold outside in the United States. So that's called a Euro dollar. Not just in Europe, in Asia, it's still Euro dollar. It's kind of jargon in, in market. Euro yen is the say, yen denominated bonds sold outside of Japan. Euro sterling, pound denominated bonds outside of the United Kingdom. There's a euro, euro, euro denominated bonds selling outside of the euro. Okay, so that's called the euro bonds. So you need to know the difference between international, the foreign bond and the euro bonds. Uh, there's some innovations in the bond market. So inverse plural, which, uh, whose coupon rate falls when interest rate rise. This is very unique because the usually coupon rate uh, move with the interest rate. So if coupon rate, interest rate falls, then coupon rate falls to mitigate the interest rate risk. Now inverse flow actually uh, exaggerate the, the interest rate risk, which means you can increase the risk by moving different uh, opposite uh, way. Because if keep the interest rate rise, it means the bond price falls. So you lose money. Usually the floors coupon rate rise so that they mitigate the, the loss from the price differences. But this case, inverse floor coupon rate, 
even false, so you actually lose more. Apache cases, you actually make more money, so your risk is double. Asset backed bond is the bond whose income is coming comes from the specific asset used to service that. Okay, in kind bond, issuer can pay interest in cash or additional bonds, so it's called in kind. Catastrophe bond is basically the bond with insurance plan. So, for example, uh, FIFA in 2006 World Cup, they concerned about uh, the the terrorism, so they actually issued the bond, say that well, if terror happened in in Europe, then they don't pay part of the principal. Like the it's it's pretty common, uh, like the say Disneyland in Tokyo, when they built, they issued the catastrophe bond, say that oh, if earthquake happen over some point, then some degree, then they don't pay back everything. Index bond is the bond payments tied with the general price index, uh, price index, so price of particular commodity. So it's actually the bond uh, adjusted by inflation usually. So treasury inflation protective securities, which is usually called TIPS, is the typical index bond. So for TIPS, we have example here. So for tips, based on the inflation, we change the par value itself. Because par value changes, the coupon changes. So for example, par value will start from $1,000, right? And the first year, 2% inflation, so par value increased to $1,020. Then coupon is $40.80 instead of just 40. It's a 4% bond. Okay. Next year, 3% increases. So $1,020 times one plus 3%, which is $1,050.60, and times 4%, $42.02 are is the new coupon. And the finally 1% increases. So then one person increases, right? Then final power value is one thousand six one thousand eleven cents. Coupon times four percent. Finally, you pay final principal. So total payment is like this. If it happened, then your real return will be four percent. So this is called tips. The, the benefit of tips is you can avoid the inflation risk. Inflation risk. So that's the end of the first part. Uh, second part is the pricing of the bonds.